Okay, so this week um, I'll be taking over the lectures from Malcolm until the, um, the, le the end of the semester. Malcolm is still running the, um, the tutorials and everything else for COMP 1400 and information systems remains the same. The only difference is who's giving the lectures. Sit down quickly, please. Hey, you guys, sit down. All right, um, so today <clears throat> we're going to do a little bit of reinforcement on um, programming in Java uh, and talk specifically about how you write some algorithms. So when you're developing a program, there are two components that you always have to worry about. Up till now, we've been focusing a lot on objects and how you structure um, objects. Um, so think of a, a, a computer program as making a model of the world. Um, whether it's a, a physical model, like you might be simulating um, a building or activities in a building, it could be a virtual world where you've got characters in a game, or it could be something like a business where you're modeling the processes. When we've talked about objects, it's mostly been identify the sort of the entities in the world you're modeling and map those onto objects. Um, so that's like the data structures part of this equation. The other part is, um, once you've got these objects, you've got to describe how they behave and how you're going to manipulate the data. And that belongs to the methods that exist inside the objects. They're the algorithms that you write. Um, so today what we're going to do is, we're not going to talk about objects very much at all. In fact, everything we're going to do is going to be contained in one single object. So we're going to ignore that aspect of Java for now. And we're only going to focus on um, an example of how you write a reasonably complex algorithm to manipulate the variables and structures um, in, in your program. Okay, so the thing we're going to do is something relatively straightforward. We're going to take um, an unsorted array of numbers and write a program to sort them. So this is something that actually is, ha is really, really important in computing uh, because if you ever have to look up something, like if you, if you create a database and you want to look up something, um, if, I have, if I store the items in random order in my database, uh, what's the, there's pretty much only one way I can look things up. What, what's that? Yeah, how? Right, if I've, I've got a random collection of, of stuff... Sorry? Okay, so if it's, ra if it's ra in random order, the best that I can do is walk all the way through the list looking for um, this object. Um, so on average, how long would it take to find my, the target? No, I'm talking about just walking straight through. What's, what are the chances of finding this object some th somewhere through the array? Well, you, you'd have to work your way, on average, halfway through the array before you're likely to hit the thing. Right, so basically, you, you, all you can do is a linear search through the entire array, which is incredibly slow. So any database, um, whether it's something like uh, your accounts database or whether it's a database of, of um, graphical objects or anything like that, any database has got to have some way of doing a fast search. One way of helping that is to keep the array sorted. Right? So if you're looking up something, I guess these days you don't look up in a physical telephone book very much anymore, but if you did, um, the fact that the telephone book is sorted and you're looking up somebody's name helps you a lot because you know that if you're looking for, for J, you don't start at the beginning of the phone book and work your way through. You flip straight to J's. And, right? So sorting is... Um, uh, one of the sort of basic operations in computing that you need to make anything work reasonably quickly. We're, gonna, we're going to um, look at a sorting algorithm that's really, really simple. I mean, it's not a particularly efficient one. It's not going to sort the array as fast as you possibly could, but it's um, uh, relatively straightforward to understand, and it's a, what, what we need to illustrate how you write uh, more complex algorithms in, in our programming language. So we're going to start with um, a, a collection of numbers like that in an array. And 
the way we're going to do it is really simple. We just work our way down through the array looking for the smallest number. So in this case, we might work our way and the smallest one is, is 9. Then we're going to swap it with the first element in the array. Right? So you go down looking for the smallest one and move it to the front. And then you move on to the next one, uh, starting from element number 2. You work your way down, find the next smallest, swap it, and you keep doing that until finally you've got the whole thing sorted. Right? Does, that, does the basic design, does that make sense? Right? You're just looking for the smallest element over and over again, moving it up to the front. So we need to write a program that's going to do that. Okay, so the process is, like we said, um, oh, sorry, five is the smallest, not nine. So we, we work our way down, um, looking for five. We swap it with um, 11, so now five is up the front. Now, when we, <coughs> when we, we're going to repeat the, whole, the process again over and over and over again until we've got covered all the elements in the array. But because we've already found the smallest element and moved it up to the front, when we carry on doing our sorting, we can ignore every, the elements we've already moved up to the front and carry on from element number two, right? And keep going. So in this case, number nine is already in the right position, so we don't have to do anything. Right? So now five and nine are in the right position, so we don't worry about that. So now we start from position number, well, the third position or was 0, 1, 2, and we move on. Um, now we look for the next smallest, which is 11, so we swap that, then swap again, and by the time we've got to the um, next to last one here, we're finished. Okay? So that's how we're going to do it. So any, any questions with just the basic method? <coughs> like I said, the, this is not the fastest way. There are all sorts of um, different sorting algorithms that, that behave uh, more quickly than this one. Um, but this is, this is uh, simple enough, and it uses um, an, a, 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 an algorithm that you wrote in the tutorial last week, hopefully, finding the smallest element in an array. Um, OK. So let's have a look at the program. So if I run it, so I just ran the program then, and the first line is a, um, an unsorted array that we generated randomly. So when we write our program, the first thing we're going to do is use the random number generator that you also used in the tutorials to uh, create an array of, um, in this case, length 20, and the elements in the array are allowed to range between 0 and 99. Okay? So that first line is our randomly generated uh, array, which is completely unsorted. And the second line is after we've um, executed our program, and we've sorted it, and it comes out in the correct order. Um, notice that the random number generator can, um, can produce numbers that are the same. Like It's like if you, if you have um, a bag, and you're pulling um, you know, pieces of paper with numbers written on them at random, uh, this is called random um, selection with replacement because you, you, you pick, pick something out of the bag, read off the number, but then you put the, the number back in the bag so it could and shuffle it so that the same number could be selected again. So you see there is, we've got 77 appearing twice there uh, because the random number generator just happened to produce that twice. Okay. So let's start having a look. Uh, just a word about um, comments, just looking through um, some of the assignments. Um, we've emphasized a lot that you need to put comments in your code so that um, it, the code is readable. Um, what we would like you to do, and not everybody did, is use the, the um, commenting convention that goes with Java. So I think Malcolm's been through this before, hasn't he? Has he? Put up your hand if you remember. Has he talked about? I bet he has, but one slide. one slide. Okay. 
So when you, um, in, in uh, BlueJ, if you use the, the um, command M or alt M um, <coughs> thing to, to, to generate a template for a new method, it always gives you um, some comments like this at the beginning, you know, which is just filled with, with um, just filler stuff. But you really should um, obey this convention. So the f if it's going to be the, the comment form that is a slash star, and if it's a double star at the beginning, it means that this is going to be recognized by um, Javadoc, which is a kind of a, pre it's a, it's a, a program that goes through your program and extracts all the comments, right, and puts them in a nice, nice format. So the first line here is a general description of what the method does, which you should have. And then these lines, for every parameter that you have in the method, you give this at param sort of keyword, the name of the variable, or the name of the parameter, and a description of what it's for. You know, what information is it passing into the method. And if it's not a void method, so in other words, if, it re if it's a method that returns a value, then you should have this at return and explain what it is that it returns. Right? Um, so, if you do that, and up in the, the uh, top right, you can se select whether you, want to, you, whether you want to view the source code or whether you want to view the documentation. If you view the documentation, then you get a web page that has um, all the, the, the general description, the method summaries, and then lower down the detailed descriptions of all the, the methods and their parameters and everything else. Right, so this is exactly the way the, um, the Java API, so when you're looking up how libraries, Java libraries work, you yeah, know, the built-in classes, um, all the documentation is generated in exactly the same way. So it's actually pulled straight out of the original Java source code. So when you're, for the next, next uh, assignment, when you're doing your commenting, please follow that convention um, so that it'll, it'll produce this kind of output. And it's a good discipline for making sure that you're documenting all the right things. All right. So we're going to start with our main program, main method. And the first thing we're going to do is create our randomly initialized array. Then we're going to print out the unsorted array, sort it, and then print out the sorted version. Um, can you explain to me what this line is doing? Start from left to right. Who can help him? What does the square brackets mean? If they have int, open bracket, close bracket, um, A, what does that mean? No. Well, sort of, but not quite. Can you tell me? No. What is that line doing? I mean, just in general, forget about the details of syntax. What's the purpose of that line? Can you? Don't know what to say. Can you tell me? No. Forget it. Forget about the open brackets. What? What is that line doing? Just in general. Tell me, sort of high-level description. What that? What that line is doing? What? Yeah. You. Yeah. I'm looking at you. Yeah. Uh, that's part of it. What's, what's the, the left, the left hand side of the equals, what's that doing? No, I said just the left hand side. Forget about the equals. What's the, what's the, the, dec the, the, the first part doing? Say that again? Yeah, but just focus on the left hand side. What's the purpose of the left hand side? Yep. Speak up, please. No, it's not initializing. That's what the right-hand side's doing. What's the left-hand side doing? Not assigning. It's declaring A to be a variable. What's a variable? What's a variable? 
I just need to make sure that you get the basics. Carry on. What's a variable? It's not hard. Oh, it doesn't have to be a formal definition. Right, if you think of the, the memory of a computer as being a... a, a sorry? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a place where you can store things. So think of it as a variable, just a box where you can stick stuff in, take stuff out, replace it. So we're declaring, but in order to use a variable, you have to declare its type, right? So this is saying that A is of type what? What's the type of A? Not just int. It's saying with a square bracket means it's an array of integers. Right? Now, this is so tricky. You've been, use, you've been using array lists, right? What's the difference between an array list and an array? Anybody? Yep, back there. Speak up so everybody here. Right. So an array is a primitive type in Java, and it represents a fixed length chunk of memory that's unchanged. The, the length of it is unchangeable, right? and it's a primitive type. An array list <coughs> sorry, is a class in Java that implements a variable length array. Right, so it's, it's actually, an array list is actually implemented in Java. It's a Java program where you've declared a class called array list, and it manipulates however it does it internally to give you this variable length um, ordered collection. All right? For, for this week, uh, I mean for this lecture, we're not going to use the array list. We're only going to use the primitive version of the array, which is this fixed length structure. So uh, I just don't want you to get confused between the array list that you've used before um, and this array, which is just a simple fixed um, structure. Okay, so we declare A to be a variable of type int array, and the right-hand side is a call to a method that says, well, let's go up and see what it says. Um, this is going to to create, sorry, we've already created the array, but what this is going to do, no, sorry, this will allocate space for the array. This will, this, will, this will create the array and fill it up with random numbers. Okay? So, what's this line doing? Almost the same. Ah, okay, now here. What is the difference between this A and the A up in the main method? When the variables are declared inside a method, what's the scope of the variable? Or what, I mean, what do I mean by scope of the variable? Right, so if, uh, if it's declared inside the method, it means that that variable only exists as long as that method is executing. All right? So the A that's inside random int array, that method, is different from the one that's in main. Okay? That's really important. It's different from the other one. Uh, maybe I should have given it a different name, but um, they're, they're separate, uh, totally separate bits of memory. Okay? So we're declaring A to be another int array, and this is saying, allocate a chunk of memory. Um, I made a mistake there. What's the mistake? Oh, no, no, sorry, I didn't. No, sorry. Wrong. What's, what does that come from? What's this length doing? Yeah, but where does it come from? Right, so it's a parameter which we've de described up in our comments saying it's the length of the array that we want to create and it was passed in from up the top. So what's the value of length in this instance? 20, okay, so we said we want to create a new array of length 20. Right, so it gets passed through the parameters down into here and this says allocate a chunk of memory that will fit um, 20 integers. Right? and assign that 
to the variable a. Okay, this you should know from the tutorial. Um, we've got a, a built-in library in Java is for random number generators, which you've looked at before. Um, so that says create a new random number generator. What's generator? Hmm? Right, out of type? Random. So even, even constructed types, right, like that, appear the same way. So you, you, when you're declaring a variable, you always have the, the, variable, the type of the variable, variable name, and optionally, an initialization. All right, so generator is a new random number generator. Now, um, I don't want to go back somewhere. You, can you tell me what that loop is doing? Okay, good. Now tell us. Uh, Alright, so A dot length is telling us the array, the size of the array, right? Uh, now, so here's the difference between array. If, we, if A was an array list, not an array, instead of A dot length, what would I have here? A dot size what? Open, close parentheses, right? Because, because um, an array is a primitive type, length is actually just a, a field that belongs to um, the ar array. If this was an array list, it would actually, to get the size of the array list, would actually be a call to a method. So you'd have to have the open size, open, close parentheses. All right, so this is going from 0 to um, length minus 1, creating a random integer and assigning it to the ith element of the array. Uh, what's n? Okay, so here's another parameter. In this case, what's the value of it? So uh, what's the effect? Of what, what is n telling the random number generator? 0 to 99 here. All right, so it's saying, whoops. It's saying um, ge here, generate an, an integer from 0 to n minus 1, so up to 99. Okay? And putting that in the ith element of the array. And at the end, we return the, the newly constructed array. And up the top, When, 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 this, um, when this method returns, that new array created randomly here is what gets assigned to A. Okay? Okay, the next method is easy. Um, We want to be able to print out an array so we can see uh, what it was like when it was in its original form and what it's like after we sort it. So we pass an array parameter to this method. So notice it's the same, the, the, the declaration of the parameter is the same as our variable declaration up the top. We want to declare an array, so the open close brackets means it's an array of integers and we're calling it A. So this A, again, is different from all the other A variables we've seen before. Welcome. Sit. <laughs> Quickly. Um, so same story here. We're looping through from 0 to the length minus 1 um, and using the, the built-in print stuff to print things out onto the terminal. What does this mean? What's AI plus um, the string there? What does that mean? Yeah, but let's break it down a little bit more. 
um, we have um, an integer plus a string. So that's, a, that's an expression. It's a string expression. And what's the effect of that plus in this case? Right, if you say 1 plus 2, plus is an operator or a function that has two arguments. Both arguments are of type integer and it results in an, in an integer output, right? In this case, we have an integer plus a string. So what's, first of all, what's the effect of that? Yeah. Well, okay, so if it does one thing, uh, another thing first. The first thing it does is turn the integer into a string, right? So Java gives you, has built-in stuff that takes the integer and works out how to convert it into a string that represents the number, right? So if you have the number 10, internally the computer stores a 10 in sort of binary, as binary digits. To print it out, it's got to be turned into the letters 1 and 0. So that operator first converts the integer into a string, and then the effect of the plus is to concatenate the two strings. So the result of doing integer plus string has type what? What's the, the, the result, the, the type of the result? A string. So that the plus, when it gives this, gets these mixed types, converts the result into a string. Okay, so that's sent to the um, print method in the system.out library. That goes out to the terminal. And what does this thing, last one, do? What's the difference between print and print ln? Yep, but. Okay, so this one, um, it, every time it prints things out, it, it doesn't emit a new line character. The ln means that after you've printed everything in there, emit the new line character so the next print will carry on from, from the next line. Okay, any questions up to what we've got so far? Okay. Now we got on to the sort of the, the meaty bit of the, the actual algorithm. We want to do this thing called the selection sort, which is the algorithm we talked about before. Um, the parameter to the sort algorithm, to the sort method, is another integer array, or actually the one that we created before. Now, we're going to do a sort that actually modifies the same array. I mean, another way of doing this would be to create a whole new array and move all the elements from one array into the other and put them in in the right order. But what we're going to do is modify the actual array itself. So that means that this method isn't going to return any value. Right? So we declare it as void because it's not going to return a value. What it's going to do is actually modify that parameter. So that's the way it's going to return its result. Oh, by the way, throughout these things, you're, you're, you may have noticed this static keyword here. Um, for now, don't worry about that too much because we're going to come back to that later on. But the static keyword means that you can execute this method without creating new objects, a new instance of this class. For, for now, forget about it. We'll come back to it. Um, all right. So, uh, can you describe to me what the algorithm is doing? <laughs> no, it doesn't do that. Um, let's start with, well, do, just do it, break it down one at a time. Obviously, we're looping through the array, going from beginning to, end, to, to the, nearly to the end. Um, what did we say that the first, what did we, ha how did we say the algorithm worked? Just forget about looking at the actual code. Do you remember what we said, how the algorithm works? Okay, so you're gonna, we're going to search down through the array looking for the smallest element in the array. So a good guess about what this is, is that that is a method that we're going to 
um, look at in more detail later. And it's going to return the position of the smallest element. Right? So the first thing we want to do is search down through the array looking for the smallest element and it's, this, this method is going to return the position of the smallest element, like position in the array. All right? Does that make sense? Um, we're going to then swap. Uh, remember that once we found the, that element, the smallest element, we're going to swap it with the um, element at the beginning of the array. Right? Now, uh, that's what this says. We'll come back to that. But what does that if statement do? If you think about the logic of what's going on, what is that, in, that if statement? It's actually not completely necessary. It's um, just that's avoiding doing some extra work. So if swap says, this says in array A, swap the element in bin pos with the element at position n. Right? That's what these three parameters are. You're giving it the array and then you're saying here are the positions of the two elements that I want you to swap. So what does that say? Yep, in the back. Yeah, so if, if n and min pos are the same, so remember we're, we're working our way down through the array um, so working our way through the array and looking for the smallest element and then we find it, we swap it. All right? If it turns out that the smallest element is at the beginning, you know, already in, in the right place, um, then there's no point in doing this, right? Because if this condition, so this is a, well, first of all, what, what, that's an, uh, what type of expression is that? Malcolm would have covered this. So what? No, I mean the bit inside the, this part here. Just, just this. A what? It's not equal to, but what kind of expression? What's the type of that expression? No. So the ex exclamation mark, I'm getting all tangled here. Um, the, the exclamation mark equals is, means not equals, right? So if, I, if I'm... Ah. If I'm asking... Um, is min pos not equal to n? What is the type of the of that um, expression? Boolean, because it's going to be the value of a boolean is what? True or false? Okay. So this is saying that if min pos is not equal to n, in other words, um, if the min position is somewhere else, then we can do a swap. If they're the same, then there's no point in swapping anything because it's already there, right? All you'd be doing is saying swap position n with position n. Okay? So all that's doing is protecting this thing, saying you don't need to do the swap if it's already in the right position. Okay? So, but remember, whenever you've got a comparison like this, um, then that's a Boolean expression returns true or false. So any true or false value can be a condition inside the, the if, or the condition part of your statement. All right, so... It's going through. Um, uh, okay, now, what is happening with the for loop there? Right, we're, we're saying that um, keep moving forward from zero to length minus one, um, and notice that we're calling min pos with two parameters a and n. This is the array that we want to find the. Um, uh, the, the, the smallest element of. N is saying, as we move through the array, we're assuming that the elements kind of that we've already processed are in their right position, so we don't have to search them, you know, for the smallest element. The small ones have already been shifted off to the left-hand side of the array. So this is saying, find the position of the minimum, minimum element in the array A starting from position N. Right, does that make sense? Hands up everybody who 
does not understand that. Okay, that's that's embarrassing. Um, how do it the other way around? Hand up, hands up, who does understand? Who do understand it? Yeah, see, it's not quite the same. <laughs> uh, let's go back to our example. So this remember, this is our the, our unsorted array when we start. We find the smallest element and move it up to the front. So we already know now that this one here is the smallest element. So if we're going to search for the next smallest, there's no point. You could, but it would be inefficient. There'd be, there's no point in starting from the beginning of the array again. You might as well carry on from position 2, right? Or position 1, I mean, 0, 1. Um, so then when we swap the next one, so here is a case, by the way, remember we had the if statement protecting us from doing the swap. This is a case where 9 is already in the right position. Right? So that's why that if statement was there, pre preventing... Um, us calling swap on, on the thing that's already in the right place. So now we've got the first two elements in the right position. So again, if we're looking for the next smallest, no point in starting from the beginning because they're already in the right place. Carry on from here. Right? So every time you call min, min, um, what is it, min position, minimum position, um, you don't need to start it from the beginning every time. Instead, you start it from wherever you're currently up to in the loop. So back here, this is our loop going from start to beginning, uh, sorry, start to end. Um, initially, n is 0, so we're saying search for the entire array, look for the smallest element, and then swap it into position 0. In the next loop, n becomes 1, so the element in position 0 is already the smallest one, so now we start looking for the smallest element starting from position 1 find it, swap it into position 1, and now when we look for the next smallest, we start from position 2, and we keep doing that until we get right to nearly the end of the array. Um, why do we only loop to length minus 1, not length? Yep. Because you the last Yeah, so by the time you got to the end, you've already done the swap, so you, you can just stop at the very last one. Uh, sorry, at the second last one. All right, so now, are there any questions about the, um, that part? So we understand what the loop's doing, moving progressively down. Okay. Now, this, this algorithm should be familiar to you if you've done, if you finished last week's tube. Um, yes, it was catch-up, but... Uh, you should have still covered this. All right, so this is, this is the thing looking for the minimum element. Um, again, remember to do the comments in this format. The parameters are the array that we want to search. And what was from? What's the from parameter? Yeah, it's where we want to start searching from, right? So remember that um, we're progressing down through the array. All the elements um, up sort of on the left-hand side we assume are already sorted. So we only need to so search the array starting from um, some element in, in the call from the loop before in the other method, right? So this is saying um, search the integer array starting from position from. So in this loop here, when we start our loop, um, rather than starting from zero the way you normally would, we're starting from this uh, from plus one. Okay. Um, What's the first line doing? I'm going to pick someone. Who haven't I picked on? Um, yep, red shirt. What's the first line doing? <laughs> what is this line doing? Uh, 
Right? Our purpose is to search for the smallest element in um, the array starting from position from. So what's that? We're, de we're declaring an integer called minpos, and what are we initializing it with? Yeah, but why? If you've got an array of numbers, and you're trying to find the smallest element in that array, then this method says, let's start by assuming that the first element in the array is the smallest one. Right? Um, and from is the position of the first element. Okay? So we assume, start assuming that the first element in the array is the smallest one. And now we're going to loop from the next element, so that's why we initialize int to from plus one, right? And we go through and say, um, well, okay, so moving on from there, what's the method? Uh, somebody, can you tell me? Can anybody help? What's the if statement inside the for loop saying? Anybody? What? Now, if we loop through the array and we find one that's smaller than what we think is, the, or we currently think is the smallest element, then we're going to reassign minpos to store this new position. Okay? All right. So we start out by saying, let's assume that the position of the smallest element is the first element. And we loop through the array comparing the, the values of that one with the, the, uh, the loop one we go to. And if the one in the loop that we find is smaller than our current sort of hypothesis for which one is the smallest, then we reassign mean pos to be that position. Okay. So by the time we get to the end and we return min pos, min pos should be the position of the smallest element. Right? So remember that um, the type of min pos here that we return is given up in the declaration of the, in the header of the, the, the method. So we've set up here that, that min position is a public method that's going to return an integer value, and min pos is also declared to be an integer. So these, these, integer these, sorry, these type declarations have to be compatible. Quiet, please. OK. Um, before we have a look at the swap, yep. I still don't like I get what the if statement is and the for statement. I don't really get why we assign like why we assign the prompt. Um, so we've got we've got our array, yeah. right? and remember we said we'd swap. We we say look for the smallest element and move it up here, right? So if I'm going to look for the next smallest element, then I'm going to start looking, because I've already put the smallest one here, the next time I'm going to start looking, I'm going to start looking from here, right? So I forget about that part. So the from is telling us where we're up to. Okay? So, so that from there, so okay, so the next bit is, suppose I'm starting from here looking for the smallest element, then I say, okay, let's assume that this one is the smallest element. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to step through the remainder of the array, and suppose now I find out that this one is actually smaller than that one. Then I reassign minpos to be the position of this guy. And as we keep going through, by the time we get to the end, minpos will store the position of the smallest element. Okay, does that make sense? 
the, the, from, the, the, from there is, the from is only there to save time so that you don't search through the, the early part of your array which has already been sorted. You, you could. I mean, the, the algorithm would still work if you search from zero to the end all the time. The problem is, though, that you'd be wasting time because if you've sorted the you know, early part of your array, what's the point? Because they're, they're all going to be smaller. Okay? So passing the from in is a, is a time saver. But it's significant because if this is a very, very long array and you've got to be searching the array every time up and down, then it's going to waste a huge amount of time. Whereas if it's a very long array and you're getting towards the end and you're storing from, you'll be saving a lot of time. Okay? Um, it's important, we're not going to talk very much in this course about the complexity of algorithms, but when you're dealing with databases that can have millions of items in it, um, even saving a little bit of effort in a loop can overall save you a huge amount of computing time. All right. Um, so the last thing that we've got to... How much time have we got left? Quickly. Um, the last thing we've got to do is work out how to swap um, items in, a, in an array. So I'm going to have a swap... Here is our swap method. We're going to pass the array in and, integer and position i, position j. We want to swap the two elements in position i and position j. This will take exactly three statements. Can you tell me what they are? They're really simple. Just three assignment statements. If I want to swap Right. Is a i, a j. I want to swap element um, a i with element a j. How am I going to do it? No, it's just it's just assignment statements. There's no loops, no nothing. Yep. Okay, so I declare a temporary local variable here and assign the value of AI to that variable. Now I move the value at AJ to AI and then move the temporary into AJ. Right, so that's like um, if, I, if I want to swap this element and this element, I can't just immediately do that. Instead, what I do is take the value in here, move it out to a temporary one, then move this guy out, and then move this guy in. Because right? if, I, if I tried to do it in just two, sta two statements, I'd end up clobbering one of the values. Right? Everybody happy with that? That's, that's a simple one. Okay, um, so that's the end for today. We'll see you on Thursday.